Hey guys, I um, wanted to go over a couple of our solving polynomials um, problems so you can kind of see one of each of these as we kind of come back from break or, or beforehand you can kind of see these real quick um, to get an example of what you're doing. Okay, um, So for solving polynomials, there's a couple different ways we deal with these. There's usually about four different terms or, or different uh, polynomials. We have our trinomials, we usually have difference of squares, we have our sum and difference of cubes, and then we have four term polynomials. Okay, I'll be showing you three of them because the four term polynomial is the exact same as our um, trinomials after the first step. Okay, So initially you're going to look through and see is there anything that I can factor out. Right now there's nothing that factors out of these because there's no um, common factor with our 3 and our 8 or our 23 for that matter. Um, so I'm going to multiply my a times my c. So 8 times our negative 3 gets me negative 24. I want to find factors of 24 or negative 24 that multiply to get negative 24, but add together to get me my positive 23. So in that case, I'd have 24 and negative 1. I go through plugging these in. So I've got 24x minus 1x minus 3. Again, from here, this is where our four term polynomial is kind of set the exact same way. We've got our four terms. I'm going to put parentheses around the first two and the second two and we factor out what we can from each. So the first one I can factor out an 8x. What's left when I divide? 8 divided by 8 is 1. If I took away 1x from there, I have 1x. 24 divided by 8 is 3. Second polynomial or second term here. Um, I want to get rid of this negative. We can't have a negative value for my first term. So here I'm going to divide both by negative 1. So I have negative 1 here, x plus 3. This changes to a plus. A couple students have asked me about this because essentially I'm dividing each term by negative 1. So negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. So I have my common uh, binomial inside the parentheses. That's good. So then I'd have 8x minus 1. The two, two pieces I brought out come together in my first parentheses. My second parentheses is x plus 3. This part should be kind of normal. This is what we did last unit for factoring. Now the solving portion is just putting each of these parentheses equal to 0. So I would have 8x minus 1 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. For the first one you'd add 1, divide by 8, so you'd have x equals 1 eighth, or subtract 3 and we get x equals negative 3. So here is my two solutions this problem. The nice part about this unit is you know exactly how many answers you should get from the very beginning. Whatever your exponent, your degree, your highest exponent that you're seeing, that tells you how many answers you should have. Here I have one, two, so I have all of my answers for this problem. Okay, So this is factoring a trinomial. The next one we're going to look at is factoring um, when we have a difference of squares. Um, the first thing you need to do is check your numbers, see if your numbers actually are perfect squares. You can just do the square root, see if it works. Um, and the next part is you'd look to see if your um, exponent actually works as well. So here, if I had a 3, I would not be using difference of squares. If I had um, a 5, I wouldn't be using difference of squares. I'm um, looking usually for a 2 or a 4 kind of gives me that hint that I'm going to be doing that. So because I have a 4 here, I know I can do the square root of this first term. 16, I can do the square root of and get a perfect number. That's good. The last check is this has to be a minus. If it is a plus, it is not difference of squares because difference tells us it's that subtraction. Okay? There is no, if there's no uh, minus there, then this thing is not possible for this um, particular polynomial. Okay? So for this, because I can do the square root of both and I have a minus in the middle, I'm going to split this up just like our regular difference of square rules. Square root of y to the fourth, y squared times y squared gets me y to the fourth, so I'd have y squared as my first term. Square root of 16 is 4, so I have 4 for both of these. And again, when we do difference of squares, we have a 1, one of our uh, binomials is plus, one of our binomials is minus. It doesn't matter which way you put this, either way is okay for which one has the plus or the minus, but one needs to be plus, one needs to be minus. Okay. Before I like put these equal to zero, I need to make sure or ensure that I've factored this completely. So the first one here, yes, it's a perfect square. Yes, it's a perfect square, but it's a plus. So this one comes down and doesn't change. This one 
perfect square, perfect square, we have a minus, so this would split up into y minus 2 and y plus 2. Again, perfect square, square root of y squared is y, square root of 4 is 2, 1 minus 1 plus equals 0. You're then going to put each of these equal to 0. Once it's fully factored, you put each equal to 0. So here I've got y squared plus 4 equals 0, y minus 2 equals 0, and y plus 2 equals 0. The second two are really easy. It's one step. You add 2 here, so I get y equals 2. Here you'd subtract 2, so you'd get y equals negative 2. So there is 2 of, again, what we should have four answers. Our last one here is a little bit funky. Um, we have a squared. Normally, like these ones, we had just a y, so this one I've got y squared. I'm still going to solve, get my y by itself, so I've got y squared equals negative 4. To get y by itself, we have to do the square root. Anytime I'm doing my square root, we have a plus or minus possible answer, so I have a positive or negative. So this would be y equals positive or negative. I can do the square root of 4, but if I type that in my calculator with the negative, the negative is automatically going to give us an error. So what we've learned previously is anytime I have a negative inside my radical, I'm going to put an i there. That's our imaginary number that kind of holds that place of a negative 1. So I have i, square root of 4 is 2, so this would be my other solution. Okay? i comes from it being negative, square root of 4 gives me that 2, positive or negative is because I'm doing the square root. So now, it looks like I only have three answers, but because this is a positive or negative 2i, that essentially is two different answers. Positive 2i, negative 2i, 2, and negative 2. So that gets me my four um, different answers. Degree is 4, so I know I got everything covered. Okay? Um, the last one is our um, sum or difference of cubes. The only difference between those two things are the plus or the minus in the middle. The one that I'm going to show you guys right now is difference of cubes. If it's sum of cubes, essentially going to be the exact same thing that I'm doing um, in the example, except for it just changes the signs um, from our format up above. Okay? So this problem is 64 r cubed minus 343. Again, the only difference is this sign right here. Changing to a plus just changes um, what we put in those two parentheses. Okay? For these, you're going to have that 3. You're going to have that cubic piece. Um, again, you should always look to see if you can factor something out at first. Um, if you can't, then you're looking at this piece. So this one, I can't factor anything out right now, so I'm just going to deal with this cubic. Okay? I know it's different because it's got the minus in the middle. I can do the cubed root of 64 and the cubed root of 343 and get myself um, perfect numbers here. So the cubed root of 64 is 4. The cubed root of r is r. The cube root of 343 is 7. So I like to do this first, is just do the cube roots of each, each so I know I have my a value and my b value. Um, and then I can just plug it in to our formula up here. It makes it a little bit easier when you just set them separately apart like this, instead of trying to always go back to that 64 and that 343. Okay. So I will plug this into my formula. So I've got 4r minus 7. Again, notice I didn't put a negative 7 here with the sign. I just treat that b value like a positive value. Okay? Because once we plug it into the formula, then you're going to get your positive or negatives from there. So I have 4r minus 7. That's what my formula says right here. Then I have to do a squared. So a value is 4r. So if I squared 4r, it would be 16r squared. The most common thing to do, or the most common thing that I see is people forget to square the 4. Make sure you're also including that um, in your problem. Right. Um, our middle term says plus AB, so again, I'm going to put a plus A times B, so 4 times 7 is 28, R, and then B squared, which makes it 49. Okay. Again, this is all equal to 0. So the first term right here, my first binomial, I can just do 4R minus 7 equals 0 and solve this thing, just like we did for the rest of them. It is okay to get fraction answers and leave them as fractions. So this one would just be r equals 7 fourths. So that would get me one of my three possible answers. Okay. Over here, though, any of my cubics, and this is why cubics, a lot of people didn't really like them um, in class, um, is because our cubics, this trinomial, will never factor like perfectly. It's not one that I can just do my um, a times c and get my answer. These are ones you're going to have to do your quadratic formula for. Okay. So if I go through, I have my a value, my b value, my c value of our trinomial. We're going to plug this into our quadratic formula. 
I'm going to kind of move this over here to work this out. So we have opposite B, so it would be negative 28, plus or minus square root of 28 squared minus 4 times our A value, which is 16, times our C value, which is 49, all over 2 times our A value, which was 16. Okay, this is back that quadratic formula. Um, you are able to use this on your test or be given to you on your test and your quiz, um, but this is one that you got to plug things into. When you plug these values into your calculator, you got to double check what we got uh, earlier. So 28 squared minus 4 times 16 times the 49. It gets you an ugly number. You get... 2,000, negative 2,352 over and 2 times 16 is 32. Okay. This number we don't like. The reason I don't like it is because if I do the square root of 2,352, it does not get me a perfect number. That means I got to go to a factor tree. I know I'm going to get an I out of this, so I'm just going to put an I down here at the end. Um, I can just go through and divide this thing by 2 over and over again. So I have, for my factor tree, I'm going to go 2, and it's 1176. Again, you can pick larger numbers, but a lot of times with these really big numbers, um, coming up with that larger number you're going to divide by can be difficult. So I'm going to continue dividing by 2. Yes, this is a little bit tedious, but this is how we're going to get um, our most factored version of this. And then 147 divided by... 7, 21, 3, and 7. I'll put this I further down over here. Okay, so then I look for pairs. I've got a pair of 2s, a pair of 2s, a pair of 7s. So this brings out one whole number 2. This brings out another whole number 2. And this brings out a 7. You would multiply all of our circled numbers that came out. So 7 times 2 times 2 gives me 28. Our leftover number here is the 3, so I'd have square root of 3. This will be essentially replacing our radical up here. Okay. So what our problem now looks like, and I'll bring this down here since it's kind of in this space I can actually use now. 28 plus or minus the 28i square root of 3 over 32. Um, again, I encourage you to split this up as two fractions to simplify, so I could say negative 28 over 32 plus or minus 28i over 32. Um, this one, because they're both 28s, ends up factoring a little bit easier. You can divide both top and bottom by 4. So my final answer then is negative 7 over 8 plus or minus 7i squared of 3 over 8. Again, I have one answer here, one solution here. This one is technically two solutions because I have that plus or minus. So one solution is negative 7 eighths plus 7i squared to 3 over 8. And the other one is negative 7 eighths minus 7i squared to 3 over 8. You can leave it like that in your answer if you would like. Okay. This is just, again, giving you one of each of our, um, one of each of our polynomials that we can solve. Again, a trinomial, um, our difference of square, our difference in sum of cubes, and then our four-term polynomial essentially is taken care of with our trinomial. Let me know if you got any questions. Again, hopefully this helps a little bit um, as far as going through a couple examples. Um, but again, we'll continue with this a little bit more um, after spring break. All right. Let me know if you got questions. See you guys soon.